everybody. It's JJ Conway. I have a 345 Central on my phone. That's when we're supposed to start. I believe an excellent event starts on time and ends on time, but we will give folks one minute of grace. So we will get started in about one minute. I'm so glad that you all are on the line today. Awesome. Right off, right. Hey, everybody. I'm JJ Conway. I'm so excited that you're here for our speaker auditions for Juneteenth. This is our last live audition that we're going to be doing because we're almost filled. We're all, I'm just going to be up front with you. We're almost full of the event. A lot of people are taking really advantage of getting in front of Boyce Watkins and Dr. Cheryl Wood and Sneetia S. Bland. So if you have questions, make sure you ask them. I'm super glad that you all are here for our call for speakers. This is a hybrid event. So it is June 15th through the 17th. June 15th, that Thursday, is in person in Chicago. And then the breakfast Friday morning, the Black Vets Veteran, is also in person. And the rest of the conference is a virtual broadcast. And we'll talk a little bit more about how each of those pieces fit together as we go on throughout our time together today. This is our fifth annual conference. So we had one before the pandemic. The others were during the pandemic, and this is our first one back in person. So I'm very excited to be back in person. Anybody else excited to be back in person, or did you really like the Zoom? I have a hard time with Zoom. It seems I like, like the combination. You do? <laughs> well, you killed it. You killed it in our uh, Wealthy Me in 23 hybrid event that we did. One of the reasons we started Juneteenth Legacy is because I... I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but it's important to the foundation of the conference. You know, everybody's got an origin story, right? But I did not know, even as a Black woman in the United States, that Juneteenth represented two and a half years that Texas Blacks did not know they had been freed from slavery. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I thought it was a six-month delay. And if you have worked in government all your life, like I worked in government all my life, well, it's kind of easy to understand how it might take six months from word to get to the East Coast, from the East Coast states and get all the way to Texas. I mean, they didn't have internet. They didn't have cell phones. I mean, it's kind of, you can kind of understand, but two and a half years, there is a dead cat on the line. And what we've discovered, those of us who've done research into racial inequality when, with respect to wealth building, is we found that there are a lot of dead cats on the line still today in the United States of America. So while all of my conferences have global reach, and this conference will also have global reach, this particular conference is specifically about upleveling the life of American Blacks and the, either those who descended from slaves, either those who descended from slaves, or those who look like they descended from slaves in this country have a massive set of obstacles that prevent wealth building. It's not that we can't build wealth, but it takes race conscious strategies. So when Forbes magazine says, hey, racial wealth inequality in the U.S. is rampant, and they take this problem that's been talked about behind closed doors in Black communities, and they bring it out to the forefront and say, hey, world, let's do something about it. Those who can profit from doing something about it are trying to profit from doing something about it. Those who can't profit from doing something about it, hmm, they seem to be a little sluggish, just like the news of Juneteenth was sluggish. There is a legacy. There are vestiges of what happened back in Juneteenth that are still happening today. We have opportunities. We have capabilities. We have all kinds of talent and untapped resources that are not being tapped because we either lack the knowledge 
or we don't know how to utilize them in a collective fashion. We are trying too much, as Dr. Fraser says, to build our wealth and build our families using a Eurocentric individualistic mindset. I'm going to do it myself. I'm arrogant and cocky and I can make it happen. That American stereotype does not work for people of color in this country. And this conference is going to talk about what does. A little bit about Conway Financial Group. Our mission is to provide the success formulas, tools, and step-by-step -step instructions to teach our audience how to be wealthy and prosper so they can create generational wealth. I want you to be a millionaire right now, but I'm not trying to just make you a millionaire right now. This company and the people that work with me to make this company happen, we want people to build wealth and have their children be able to build wealth and their children after that and their children after that. That is what we are looking for here. We don't want to just be a flash in the pan. Too many of us in this culture have been a flash in the pan. And if you go into the, the Bureau of Statistics and the Department of Labor websites, you will find the statistics show Black wealth is declining from generation to generation. Black debt is climbing from generation to generation. My goal is that we, our people will have the financial freedom to live their fullest life in a higher calling. And you can't live your fullest life if you're worried about where your next paycheck is going to come from, or you're worried about corporate lynching stopping either you or your children from being all they can be. Dr. George Fraser says that African American consumers spend 1.1 trillion a year. Just imagine. If we could take half of that buying power, not even half of that buying power, let's let's just take a tenth. Let's just take a tenth of that buying power. That's a hundred billion dollars. A hundred billion dollars. If we took a tenth of this consumer buying power and put it into up leveling our communities, educating our children, creating entrepreneurs, if we were able to harness even a tenth of that buying power and put it into our third and fourth generations. Imagine what a different landscape America would be for people of color. Imagine what a different landscape it would be for our children, our nieces, our nephews, our communities. So this conference has several objectives. One, we want to educate. I admit I was probably part of the problem early in my military career. I served for 23 years in the Air Force, and it wasn't until the end of my career when a car accident took me out of the running for advanced leadership that I discovered how they treat people who they don't deem important. And in my case, I don't know that I was so important, but I was the first Black to be a physicist in the Air Force. So anytime I went in the room, I checked off several token boxes. So I guess they wanted to keep me around until the car accident and said they couldn't. But when you don't see what's going on, you find that people think that they can succeed without each other. And that's what I found. That's how I started off my military career. And that's how I found in my doctoral research, a lot of the younger officers that I interviewed, they had no idea what was hitting them once they made that transition from major, which is a little bit of red. You in charge of a few things. You, 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 you qualify to make it all the way to retirement as opposed to the lower ranks where they'll put you out if you don't get promoted. And the next rank up, we and colonel were all of a sudden wait a second she's not supposed to be competing with us for colonel or general now we need to put her back in her place universally there was such a huge divide in education in those two groups then i went and studied academia and i looked at the corporate world and even in the nonprofit sector so many sectors even professional speaking y'all that's why it's so important to me to create stages and platforms and pathways to elevate our voices it's, it's, it's a universal problem within this country. And so the first step is to educate, understand how the deck has been stacked against us. And then the next step is to understand that you're not alone in feeling that the deck might be stacked against you. And most importantly, learn what to do about it. Because, because when we talk about having real talk about real issues, you know what real talk means a lot of time? Real talk means I'm going to sit here and vent for a little bit. I'm going to vent and I'm going to get out all the feels and then we're going to walk away in our negativity. I want people to vent to some extent because sometimes you don't know that you 
are not alone. Sometimes you don't know that other people are going through what you've been going through. They're fighting what you've been fighting. And so it's good to get that out and share our stories and share our frustrations. But the bottom line is for this conference, we don't want to just share the frustrations. We want to share stories of success and strategies to overcome those frustrations. And then our final goal for the conference is networking. Like Dr. Fraser says, our tendency in the United States of America is to operate from an individualistic standpoint. And that is not going to work for people of color who wish to build wealth. And so this conference, like Dr. Boyce Watkins All Black National Conference and Dr. George Fraser's P power networking conference like those two conferences in their lanes serve as networking opportunities for professional black people to harness their economic power to up-level communities. I am looking for this conference to serve as a stepping stone to those conferences as well, to be able to start those networks, connect with those higher thought leaders, those millionaires and those billionaires who are wanting to create pathways for our success. I'm so excited this year to be added to the faculty for Dr. Fraser's Power Networking Conference because it's one of Forbes' top five conferences for networking in the nation. And it, and it was just so powerful these last couple of years to walk into that room and see people who not only care about helping me succeed in my business, but have the economic power with which to help me. And so that's the kind of, that's the kind of firepower that this conference is growing into and feeding into. All right. I mentioned Dr. Boyce Watkins and his All Black National Convention. He is our executive headliner for this conference. I am just pleased as punch to have Dr. Boyce Watkins in the room Thursday, June 15th. Dr. Boyce Watkins will be providing an executive session, an executive keynote, and then he will also be attending a very special intimate closed group VIP dinner. Now, as speakers, if you are speaking and you are in person, you are automatically part of that intimate closed group that will be in the room in the dinner with Dr. Boyce Watkins. We also have as a celebrity guest speaker, Sanithia S. Bland. You might have seen her on CBS as Tough as Nails. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I invited her to speak in this conference. It is a little bit personal. I got choked up the last couple of times I did this. And I thought, you know how sometimes they say you shouldn't speak if you can't talk about your experience without the tears. So I felt like, oh, this might be a little too soon, but she's already coming. So we are gonna talk about this, whether I have tears or don't. But the reason that what she's doing to help formerly incarcerated women create new pathways in life, the reason that is just so important to me is that my father was incarcerated when I graduated from the Air Force Academy. And after, after he got out, maybe about three years into my military career, he got out of, he got out of jail. He wanted to get into my life, but I wouldn't let him because I was afraid. I didn't want him to go back to old ways. And I had finally gotten out of poverty, got a good job, was on track to do something great in the Air Force. And I didn't need him coming along and, and then taking advantage of me, stealing from me or getting me into trouble with whatever habits he had. If you've never served in the military, if you have family members under your roof that do drugs or they deal or they do all these other things, well, th that can rub off on you and it can cause you to end your military career. You can get literally punished for the things that the people in your family do. So I was like, mm, I finally made it. I got up out of this mess. We're not going back. And so it wasn't until my first son was born. It wasn't until my miracle baby, Philip, my firstborn lovey was born that I decided I should give him, I decided, you know, like I made that decision. The Lord spoke to my heart and told me, you need to allow him to come back into your life so he can see his grandbaby. And I'm so glad I listened to the spirit because we built a beautiful relationship before he passed away. But one of the unfortunate things that I learned about my father in that time was that he had had a jailhouse conversion, many do, but his actually stuck. And even though he was a changed man, and even though he wanted to do good in the community, there were so many obstacles in his way for being a felon to try and rebuild his life. I found out that him and his peers all suffered these kinds of issues. It was hard to find employment, quality employment beyond truck driving or janitorial work or packing and shipping work. 
It was difficult to find a quality employer who wouldn't take advantage of their felon status to dock their pay or force them to do this, that, and the other, dangling over their head. I'll just go to the cops and say you did this, knowing that no one was going to believe the felon that they didn't really do what they were accused of. And I watched my father work and work and work and finally become owner operator of his own rig. And I watched some of his peers become owners of their own shipping and packing companies. And I saw how hard they worked. And I made up my mind that I was going to do something to help people who really, really wanted a new lease on life, had served their debt to society and wanted to change how they had been in the past and learn a new skill to where they could contribute and build a legacy for themselves. Now, some states have changed some of their laws regarding those who were formerly incarcerated, but most states have a long way to go. And so I'm not ready to launch it yet because the family is still a little queasy about talking about my father, even though it's been almost four years now since he passed away. They're a little queasy about talking about this part of his life. You know, sometimes we don't want to talk about, we don't want to talk about those hard truths. Um, but I really do feel strongly led that as I build wealth, I will continue to create pathways for those who need a new lease on life. And Sanithia is doing it. So when I reached out to her and she said, yes, I said, now's the time. I may not be ready to launch the charity yet, but now's the time. All right. All right. Let me get off of that before I start crying, y'all. Okay. Our motivational keynote, our motivational keynote is going to be Dr. Cheryl Wood. She's an international motivational speaker, best-selling author, just amazing person. She founded the Global Speakers University and she helps women and a few good men find their voice and be able to speak with clarity, confidence, and power, maximizing impact and financial stability. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that Dr. Cheryl is offering our speakers, but if you have want to take your speaking career to the next level, if you're trying to get started in a speaking career, if you're just not even sure how to tell your story, or if you're like me and you've got so many stories, you have a hard time narrowing down to the one that's going to give you the most profit and the maximum impact, you need to be in the room with Dr. Cheryl Wood. Let me just level set the room because this is a wealth strategies conference. This is a wealth strategies conference, unlike any of the others that I have attended. Yet when I say we're going to talk about wealth, people think, oh, well, they're going to sell me into insurance or real estate training, or they're going to sell stocks and things like that, or they're going to, they're going to, they're going to teach me how to have a mansion on a hill and a, and a private jet and a big yacht. And I'm okay. Look, I'm okay with the house on a hill and the private jet and a big yacht. I'm really okay with that. If that's how you feel led to spend your wealth, you go right on ahead and do you. For me, I, I'm not going to deny all that, but this, this conference is deeper than that because there are hidden benefits to getting our financial house in order. I want and haven't seen, never saw it growing up, but I want our attendees to have more options in life. When you're financially stable, you don't have to be chained to that toxic job anymore. You can pick up and leave and go somewhere where they appreciate you and treat you right, where you can go where you are celebrated, not tolerated. You can also have less stress and better health. And healthcare is a very big problem in communities of color. We'll talk a little bit about medical redlining, but not just medical redlining, but the fact of being educated how to care for ourselves in the first place. People who have more stable finances have better marriages. Their kids are more financially stable and financially savvy. They don't get taken advantage of, of every little thing that's dangled in front of them. And they have the freedom to be generous. They have the freedom to have the margin in their life to do good. Now, there's another piece to having the freedom to be generous that I find that comes from having financial stability. When we have financial stability, it also helps us to be free from all the obligations and all the guilt trips many successful people have from those around them that they grew up with or in their communities that aren't quite as successful. In fact, as a financial planner and coach, it pains me that one of the biggest struggles I've noticed amongst my women of color that I don't notice amongst most men or women who are Caucasian, one of the biggest struggles I notice is that once they get a little bit of wealth, they're very quick to give it away to all the hands that are handing out out of guilt or obligation that they're not good enough to deserve this. Well, they are good enough and I need speakers that are going to help me pour that 
feeling into their audience. So it's the freedom to be generous. It's also the freedom to say no to something today so that I can say yes to a better future tomorrow and more impact tomorrow. Oh, oh I could spend a whole lot of time on that, but I'm not going to. We're going to talk about building legacy businesses. We're going to talk about legacy investing during turbulent times. We're going to talk about overcoming disparities in healthcare. And this is where I was talking about medical redlining. I just learned about this. You know, I always thought that if you became a doctor or a lawyer or any of those kinds of things, why don't you just pick up and put your shop in the hood and help people, right? Well, I found out about how the insurance companies have medically redlined our communities to keep people from even being able to afford to set up shop because they won't pay as much to go into many inner city communities as they would in the more affluent communities. On the surface, that makes sense, right? Like, like you expect if you go to Walmart in the hood, it's going to cost a little less than if you go to Walmart on the hill, right? We understand that. <laughs> it probably won't be a Walmart on the hill. It'll probably be a Target on the hill, right? But, but we understand that concept. Like if I'm a proprietor, I'm going to charge more for the people that can pay more. But the, but the problem then becomes, if you're going to charge me, if, you're as, if you as an insurance company is only going to pay me $500 here to do a procedure, but you're going to pay me $10,000 in this location to do the same procedure, and the procedure costs $8,000, that doctor... That dentist, that that chiropractor, those nurses, they literally cannot afford to set up shop in their own community. It's a travesty, y'all. Just want to add that medical redlining, the food deserts as well. The same reason why Publixes are not incentivized to be in certain areas because the household income doesn't meet there. It's another uh, problem. All right. Let me, let me just, I don't want to be, I don't want to make us late because I can talk. But when I was pregnant, I was not, I was not. Okay. First of all, do not rehab a house when you're nine months pregnant. Okay. We'll just, let's just put that as an established JJ messed up on that one, but, but we were supposed to rehab the house before I found out I was pregnant. And then, and then the, the, the closing got delayed. So we needed to get this thing turned around. We had too much money tied up into it. And I'm, I'm renovating this house in Baltimore city, right at ground zero, but it's mine. It was my house. It was my paid for house, my $3,000 house. And if any man ever treated me bad, it was my house. I was going to have a place to go. All right. So you can understand how I felt about this house. And we're renovating it because it had some fire damage. And I'm nine months pregnant. And now I'm in my 40s, surprise baby, in my 40s. And I also was high risk because I had lost four. And I had no idea about how real the struggle of food deserts was until I went into the local grocery store to get something to eat. And there was absolutely nothing in that store that my doctors would allow me to eat because of my previous miscarriages and my elderly status that I couldn't, that I couldn't eat. I had a very specific list of things not to eat. All of these chemicals and all of these different things that were known to trigger miscarriages and problems with the fetus. And even when I went to, okay, well, let me check the eggs in the middle. We don't have any electricity in the house. So I can't, so I can't, I can't, I can't buy any of this chicken or this meat or this, you know, or these eggs or this milk. Well, let me just, just see, you know, can I, can I drink some milk? There were additives in the milk. There were, I mean, it was just, it was ridiculous. I'm like, how can you even raise up? I don't want to get stirred up, y'all. I can feel myself getting stirred up. But how on earth can we raise up children who can do good in their lives and who can behave and listen? And 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 they're already, they are already in a situation that that takes their natural curiosity and their natural athleticism and their natural movement. Like, like many of uh, Dr. Fraser did a lot more research on it than I have, but many of our children are kinetic learners, right? How do you how do you take a child like that and expect them to act the way you want them to act, which is designed for other populations that don't have that kinetic learning as a as a as a um for most of the kids? And now you're feeding them chemicals and junk. Even the chicken, the chicken was 30% added ingredients. And I was like, it looks like chicken. It looks like you could pop open the pack, marinate the breasts, and put them on the grill. It, y'all, okay, I'm sorry. It's real. To the choir, but I was just like, "What? How can we win?" Okay, that's what this conference is about—to talk about those issues. I talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome and how many of us are still, unless we've done the inner work, 
to really break free of some of these legacies that have been passed down in our cells and in our beings, the post-traumatic slave syndrome and how it affects us today. And I'm not, look, I am not one of those people that's trying to say, we've got to sit back in the chair and do some hypnosis and trace our saves all the way. No, I'm not, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about let's, let's acknowledge that this is an issue. And then let's look at some things that can help us move forward. All right. Like healing movement and, and stuff like that. We're talking about the crisis of black education. We kind of, that ties really strongly into healthcare, in my opinion. Having been a homeowner in, or still am a homeowner in Baltimore City, and advocating for the needs of my block and the school there, and the lead pipes and and the asbestos in the walls. I mean, it's just like it's ridiculous. And and nobody is going to fix these problems unless we fix these problems. Everybody cares so long as it's profitable, but but in order for some. In order for us to do something, we got to do something. And so I'm, I'm here to do something. I'm here to up-level communities. And until I have the money to do it myself, I'm hoping to keep up, to keep around. And I am growing a group of people that are helping me change communities, one community at a time, one person at a time, one child at a time. We're going to talk about building a legacy after lockup. And I've kind of explained why that's so personal to me. And this is the first time that we are doing this. So this is our fifth annual conference, but this is the first time that we will talk about this subject because I think I can get through it without crying, okay? But we're going to talk about building a legacy after lockup. We're going to talk about the financial impact of Black relationships and how to overcome generations of being told that each other wasn't good enough for the other. I'll just leave that at that. We're going to talk about the corporate plantation of Black entertainment, whether it's music or performing or sports especially, or any other area in which our talent for the arts and our talent for creativity is harnessed by others for great profit, but yet we ourselves, our children, and those who are in these spaces don't seem to re don't seem to receive their fair share of compensation. We're going to talk about this issue and what to do about it. And I have a special message for veterans. As I said earlier, I was in the Air Force for 23 years. I was the first Black to be a physicist in the Air Force. My documentation says Air Force, but since the other services don't have physicists, I like to claim that I was the first Black physicist in the whole military, y'all. There's a lot of issues that fight veterans. There are a lot of reports that are coming to the surface that are validating what Black veterans have known for a long time. And that is that there are disparities in the promotion opportunities, the mentoring opportunities, your assignments that are given to you, as well as the application of discipline and who gets disciplined for what and how strongly they get disciplined for what. And they did, they've done all of these surveys and even up to 20% of white generals, these are people who are bleed blue in the Air Force, admitted that there was a problem. Another 20% failed to answer the question. So that tells you something. They all they all answered the question, I trust my leadership to handle racial bias. But when it came to, I've seen racial discrimination impact the careers of Black airmen in these areas. 20% said yes, another 20% failed to answer. 20 to 30%, depending on the question. That tells you something. And so a lot of military people have been denied their benefits that they should have when they retire from the Air Force. And so we're going to talk about that plight. We're going to talk about what to do about it. And if you have served in the military, we are going to talk about ways to leverage that service so that you can maximize your generational power, your generational wealth building power. All right. So all that said, you might be wondering, well, who should speak? Who should speak? Is this for everybody or you just want professional speakers? Well, I do want professional speakers that can bring the fire on stage. But let me tell you something. What I really want is people who have done the thing. I, I want people who have been in the trenches, who have helped change things in their communities, either have lived through it themselves or have helped other people get past these obstacles, and they have lived to tell the story, and they're willing to come in and say, here's what you do. Here's what happens, and here's what you can do about it. Those are the kind of people I'm looking for, coaches, speakers, authors, leaders, community leaders, uh, pastors, creatives, entrepreneurs. Uh, ball players, all anybody who has a heart to serve and a passion for helping others build legacy. I'm looking for people that can give the audience hope that yes, we can overcome these obstacles and still have the life we dreamed of and give them strategies to do so. If you're not a professional speaker today, or if you're still working on growing into your 
your speaking career. I mean, I'm a full-time paid uh, professional speaker and coach, you know, financial planner, financial coach, financial speaker. And even I still have to up level from, you know, I'm constantly seeking higher stages and learning from better speakers. And I'm constantly up leveling my speaking game. Uh, but if you're not a professional speaker, that is okay. We have training, we have practice opportunities. I do script review. I'll tell you more about that in a second. I do script review to help you hone your message and make sure that this platform is not just going to help me achieve my goals of, ch of changing communities, but help you change whatever goals you have for your life and your business. So the next couple of steps are first to audition. Now, I told everybody, come camera ready and have your two-minute audition ready to go. I'm going to be honest with you. After having done a, many of these over the last couple of weeks, one of the things that I've noticed, people who are not aligned with this conference, they have already fallen off. They have either dropped off the live platform or if they're watching the replay, they have already dropped off. So if you've made it this far, congratulations, you're in. All right. If you want to do your audition, if you still want to do an audition at the end, if you have time to stay on at the end and do a two-minute audition, then what we will do is we will take that audition, we will create a promo package based on that, you know, a couple of snippets based on that. We will brand it with Juneteenth and all that stuff, and then we will send it to you to use in your marketing and your sizzle reel, and we will also use it in our marketing. It's a win-win, and although my son's company, Peewigs Productions, charges about $300 to do promos like that, we are gifting that to you absolutely no charge just for you being here with us today and filming an audition. If you're not ready to film today, that's okay. You just send something to me. No more than two minutes, because I got to pay my son. <laughs> I taught him too well, <laughs> but send me something and uh, we will turn that around. It's a win-win for you, for me, and for my kids. So there you go. All right. That's the audition process. The next step is to select your speaker support package. And whenever I say speaker support package, immediately the first thing that comes to everybody's mind is, is this pay to play? And I want to assure you, this is not pay to play in the traditional sense. Now, I have already explained to you some of the very real issues that we're talking about. This is not the kind of conference that Disney's going to sponsor. This is not the kind of conference that Microsoft is going to sponsor. Now, if we were a little toned down about it and we talked about how wonderful our allies were and how it's really just our own perception and we're going to help people write their perception because, you know, there's more to the story and they just need to, you know, pull up their pants and, and take care of themselves. So if we were saying that, Microsoft would sponsor. All right, companies like that. J.P. Morgan Chase is not going to sponsor. Why? Because what do I talk about all the time on my podcast? Hey, if you want to change welfare, you want to reform welfare, why don't you start with the fat cats who are making so much money off of welfare? That's the problem with welfare. So so, so because, because this kind of a conference is not likely to get those kinds of sponsors, I am asking that speakers cost share in the production of the event. We are providing pathways for our speakers to share in the revenue. Y'all can have as much revenue as you can generate. I'm just going to kind of open the curtain a little bit and explain to you the ticket structure so you can understand how you would profit. We have three tiers of tickets. We have our complimentary ticket, which is access to a three-day virtual broadcast. They also get access to the virtual swag bag, which is what you will be able to put your ads into it. No charge as a speaker, whereas others charge, you know, three to four to a thousand dollars for that. Um, they have the option of upgrading to a virtual VIP, which gives them access to not just the three days, but also the executive session with Dr. Boyce Watkins. That live session is not included with the broadcast that is given out for free. Okay. We also have our in the room people at $99. They're general admission tickets. Their ticket covers snacks in the morning, lunch, and snacks in the afternoon. I actually think it's a pretty nice deal for a conference for that low of a price. Why are we pricing it that low? Because we want people in the room. We want to motivate change. This isn't a money grab. We're trying to motivate change. And one of the best ways to motivate change is to make sure the prices are affordable enough that people who are community leaders and nonprofits and all of that can be in the room. We also have the in-person VIP, which is includes the virtual stuff, it also includes the executive dinner, the VIP dinner with Dr. Boyce, all right? So you want to be in that room and you want to bring your audience in that room if you have audience that's in Chicago. 
Okay, so I'm going to go through what you get with the packages. The only differences in our packages are whether you're on stage or pre recorded. Okay, some people are going to do a pre recorded, they can't get to Chicago, or they just, you know, they could, but they have other priorities that week. Um, the, the pre recorded, you're going to send me something to broadcast in the three day broadcast. On stage, you're going to be on stage with Dr. Cheryl, Dr. Boyce, Sinithia. Okay, then we have the other difference is whether or not you're selling. If you're selling, you get a longer time frame. And if you're list building, you get a shorter time frame. Everything else gets what I'm about to show you. Okay. Those are the key differences in our packages. So everybody gets training for virtual speakers. Why would I give training for virtual speakers if you're going to be on stage? Well, all the people on stage also get to submit a separate virtual talk that will go out in the virtual stream the virtual broadcast. So they can either do the same talk that they're gonna give on stage, or they can give a completely different talk and maximize those recording opportunities for their sizzle reel. So if I can just talk a little bit about Shay Brown and his team. Shay Brown and his team has been doing the back end for my conferences for a couple of years now. They are world-class at what they do. They're gonna make you look good. They'll make you look good. They're gonna make me look good. They're gonna make all of us look good. I'm so excited about that. But the thing is, these are people who can tell you how to do it. And so we have the guidelines. We have the guidelines for virtual speakers. Then we also have a video by Kat of his production team to walk you through your lighting and your cameras and all the things that you need to do to ensure a quality recording. You are also going to get training with Dr. Cheryl Wood. She will be teaching about speaker success, not just speaking for briefing at work or corporate training or for preaching. All the things I thought I was good at, look, those are not the things that will help you create massive impact and massive income. And she's going to explain the difference and walk you through her pyramid of speaker success so that you can maximize your opportunities. All the packages include an intro and an outro and a lower third at the bottom that establishes your legitimacy as a speaker. And then even after you have spoke on stage, you will get a cut with the, with the intro and the outro and the lower third added to it. It'll take it'll take a little while, but you'll get that cut of your on-stage presentation. So if you submit a pre-recorded, you're going to have two. You're going to have a pre-recorded one and your on-stage one. You'll get the raw on-stage as well. So that's, you know, you can add your own styling to that. My intention is to put everything into Amazon as a Juneteenth Legacy Special for June. I'm so excited, y'all. I believe we're going to make this happen. And it's a, it's an extra Benny. That's why it's not on the slide. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. All right. This is an example of the kind of graphics. Shay Brown and his team, they do an amazing job. You're going to get that styling. You're going to get these graphics. You're going to be on the broadcast page. Now, this is from a different conference. So the Juneteenth one is going to look different from this. And then you're also getting opportunities to be on the Building Wealth Together podcast. I love having my conference guests on the Building Wealth Together podcast because being on the podcast allows you to get more access to the audience. And the more they see you and the more brand recognition that you have with them, the more likely they are to buy whatever you are selling them at the event. So if you are speaking in person, you know, the free ticket people aren't going to see your talk until later. OK, they are still going to see your talk and you want to have had that rapport with them. So that's why we're making this opportunity available. Now, I want you to notice something down here. I want you to notice something down here. I want you to look at how many views are on here. Now, look, I know I know when people talk about exposure, you cannot pay rent with exposure. OK, you cannot pay rent with exposure. But I want you to see that we have very real eyeballs on these talks. When I broadcast my events, we have very real views. We have very real interactions. We have very real people who are making money. Or if their goal is not to make money, having a community impact with their talks. Serious numbers. But seriously though, I have I have paid two and three and five thousand dollars to be in somebody's virtual summit and got zero views. Wow. And they promised the world. They said, we're going to do this and this and this, and you're going to be able to sell this. And we're going to have, we have, and I look at their page and they got a hundred thousand followers. And I think, well, it's not a million, but it, it, it's a hundred thousand. It's not too bad. You know, I only really need 10 people to buy my $5,000 class to make me a $50,000 day. Okay, let's do it. Y'all, let me not go off on that while we're on this audition, but I'm sure some of you have been there. 
we also take the content and we repurpose it into other challenges. So you're going to get the original graphics. And then whenever we repurpose the content, you will also get additional graphics that show you participating in another one of my event with no extra work, unless you just want to. We give that opportunity out. Honestly, don't, don't, don't spread it too far. But honestly, when I started doing this first, it was simply because my conferences usually are either at the beginning of summer or close to it and at right before Christmas time. And so I wanted to have breaks with my family. So I just started repurposing the content. And now it's something that my speakers uh, come to expect. And so now we just broke, we wrote it into the program. We're going to repurpose the content. We're going to set it up to broadcast. It's going to reach a whole new group of people. We'll be on there in the comments, fluffing it up and getting people on and encouraging people. And, and the speakers come on. And I mean, it's just another, it's another way to have more impact in your community. This is a new thing. This is something I've never done before. I'm so excited that we have reached this level. Uh, we have negotiated with Pam Perry to do a takeover edition of Speakers Magazine as a print magazine that's all about the world's top or the nation's top speakers. And so we will be having a Juneteenth takeover edition. And as a speaker, whether you are virtual or whether you are uh, in the room, you will have the opportunity to be featured in this magazine. Everybody who is in the room is automatically into the magazine. Everybody else, it's going to depend on how much space we have and how much interaction that you've had with the audience. Okay. Yeah, I'm so excited. All right. We also have a VIP swag box so that even the people who are not in person have the opportunity to buy a swag box. And this is an example of one of the swag boxes from a previous event. We sent out customized mugs and, and notebooks, and then several of the speakers included their books and calendars and artwork and other things like that to send. So you as a speaker, you have the opportunity to send me your swag and put it in the swag box that people will opt into if and that the VIPs in person receive. This is an absolutely wonderful value. I have had to pay good money to put my swag in somebody else's swag bag or swag box. This is concluded at no charge for you as speakers in this event. All right. So those are the benefits of all the packages. Again, the only differences in the packages are the time that you're speaking is corresponding to whether or not you're selling or not selling. And then the other huge, I mean, really big difference is whether or not you're speaking on stage in Chicago or whether you're sending me something pre-recorded. All right. Once you make your decision and please, please, please record, <laughs> please, please, please record that talk as soon as you can, whether it's virtual or whether you're going to be on stage. I encourage all the on stage people to also record their talk and send it in or just practice or just watch them. Because if you've been, if you started your speaking career during the pandemic, and you've been used to talking to a screen with a with a mic like mine. It's a very good mic, but it's, I don't have to hold it. I don't have to do anything. If you're going to be on person on screen, what you don't want to do is hold the mic and then turn your head and make a point because you're interacting with this part of the audience and forget to bring the mic with you. So by top by recording yourself and watching yourself, you'll be able to see how you're going to appear to the audience. Okay. So even if you're even if you're even if you are like me and you like to wait till the last minute or you get it done someday, someday, look, someday never comes. Get that talk in early. Because the earlier you get that talk in, the best chance you have of being selected for Amazon. Want you to be able to also maximize your opportunities. As soon as you decide uh, what package, what speaker support package you want, we want you to submit your bio and headshots and also get us your, sp your speaker info. The speaker release form basically says, I can take your picture and put it in new collateral for future events, that I can take your talk and put it in new collateral for future events. Because you're not going to come sue me and my kids. You, if you, if you were going to send in a talk and you didn't send it in on time, it's just stuff like that. You know, the big, the biggest thing that I like to make sure speakers understand that's a little different is it does give us the right to repurpose your content. And if that's not something that you want us to do, you are welcome to strike that portion. And then we just won't put your talk in the other events that we do with your talk. Okay. Um, that, cause that's different from other speakers. I find most speakers love that. They love that. I don't know how, how, um, established either you are in your speaking career, but most of my juiciest gigs come from other speakers and how the, how other speakers feel like they can take note of me is when they see that I'm in all these different events. And even if it's a repurposed event, 
the fact is somebody thought enough of what you said to repurpose it and use it again. Okay. So uh, that is, oops, go back, go back. So that's going to be as soon as possible. The earlier you get me your headshot, the earlier you get in that queue for the graphics. And they're going to come out every two weeks or so before the event. And you don't want to send me your graphics at like, you know, the event is June 15th through 17th. You don't want to send me your graphics at one June. You might only, I mean, your headshot at one June, you might only get one graphic. We want to be able to market you. We want to be able to show the world that you're participating in this thing. Uh, by 15 May, we're going to ask that the pre-recorded keynotes are due. And normally, and this is for all my repeats that are either here or they are watching uh, the recording after the fact, okay? Normally, I would give people a deadline and I would have a week or two of grace. Unfortunately, this year, I lost most of the month of March because of a car accident. So I should have been having these calls with you a month ago. So I can't give you any grace because we need time to style it. We need time to digitize it. We need time to evaluate it for Amazon and do all those other things that go along with putting together a virtual talk. It's not just collect everybody's talk and then run it through a, you know, individual thing. Somebody's got to review them, make sure the quality is good. There are people that send us recordings and it's good for 25 minutes. And then the last part of their the last part of their um, the last part of their talk cuts off, like the part where they're about to say, "Go to my website and download my free book," or "Go to my website and book your free consultation." Like that gets cut off. Somebody has to go through and review. We had one lady. We had one lady that submitted a talk, and she, she this was a different event. She paid uh, what is it, almost five thousand dollars to be in this event, and in the middle of it, she froze. So you could hear her talking. But you couldn't see her moving. So I don't know what happened with her camera, but we were like, hey, you need to redo this. The, this was too high. This was too high vis an event. Now, now if she hadn't redone it. We would have played what we submitted. But do you think she was going to sell anything? Or do you think anybody was going to donate to her charity? I think she was a charity one where she was asking people to donate to her charity. Do you think people would have donated to her charity if they felt like she couldn't even do her video? Well, we're trying to be excellent. We're trying to walk in excellence. So we need time to review everything and make sure it's the way you intended it to be. <laughs> uh, by 25 May, if you want to put books and notebooks or pens or tchotchkes or anything into the physical swag box, we need them due by 25 May. 31 May is when the virtual swag bag ad to do. So that's basically every speaker gets a page in the book. If you want to add an additional page that is of your own designing, that has your products and your services and your web page or whatever you want to put in it, that's due to us by 31 May. And at any time, you can book your Building Wealth Together podcast slot, okay? So with all of that said, I know I've covered a lot today. And like any person who is asking people to invest in helping them succeed, I want to motivate fast action. Why do we want to motivate fast action? Because tomorrow something else might come and distract. And I am one of those people who in the past, I have missed out on very lucrative opportunities because I said I was going to get around to it. I was going to get around to it. I was going to get around to it. Well, tomorrow never comes. It's important to do things now. And so in order to motivate that, I am going to ask you to go out to JuneteenthSpeaker.com if you're virtual or JuneteenthLegacy.com and click the in-person ticket if you want to speak on stage in Chicago. You scroll down on that ticket and beneath the general admission ticket, you'll see the speaker tickets, okay? The speaker um, packages. Email me at queenofcashflowusa at gmail.com. Tell me which package you want, either the regular package or the payment plan, and I will invoice you for 25% of what that package is costing, okay? So that way, that's my way of motivating. That's my offer to you. If you're willing to take fast action and partner with me in this conference, that's my that's my gift to you. The other thing that I like to do, and this is, this is totally, I'm just gonna admit it's totally self-serving is because I like to know that I don't have to chase anybody down. I don't have to go walking around, you know, find out if somebody didn't make their third or fourth payment, right? I, I don't like having to do that. And so I love to offer a paid in full bonus. This one is super juicy, y'all. Uh, first of all, you get access to the Think and Grow Rich course. This is a guided study for eight weeks that covers all 16 chapters of Think and Grow Rich. Yes, even the chapter on sex transmutation. I do tackle that chapter 
Think and Grow Rich, I like to go through with my clients because it teaches us not just how to do the things. Like I teach people how to manage money. I teach people how to invest in real estate. But there's a certain thing that we that we often find ourselves like, if I do this and do this and do this and do this and do this, I should have this result. But sometimes it's not about what we do. It's about who we are. And Think and Grow Rich walks us through a process that allows us to really hone in on who we need to be in order to get what we want out of life. The other thing that you're going to get is the paid in full bonus is our self-image rising. This class is very personal to me. With, with this class, self-image rising, these are the lessons that helped me recover after a really bad car accident and ended my military career. I was this highfalutin scientist. I wrote reports for the president and some kids speeding around in the rain on their cell phone, joyriding, uh, rear ends me. And now I can't even make monopoly change with my son. If you, if you ask me what this was, I might say, I might think phone, but I might say cup. That's how scrambled my brain was after that car accident. And my confidence took a huge hit. My self-image took a huge hit. The government, the Air Force removed me from my job as chief of protocol for a four-star command, over 31,000 troops. And they put me in an office with no duties assigned for four months because they didn't think I was going to get better. And after four months, I really wasn't getting better. And if you if you've never if you've ever watched someone age and feel like they've been set out to pasture and that they're not relevant anymore, you might begin to understand some of how I was feeling. And these lessons are the lessons that some of my mentors at John Maxwell team poured into me to help me regain my self image and my confidence. I prayed and prayed, Lord, I need some help. I I I, I can't even barely study my word. I know I you know like all the things I knew to do. All the things I knew to do to feel better about myself, they weren't working. And when these lessons came into my life about really dreaming and about harnessing the power of the mind and the power of imagination and understanding the power of our imagination to either create a beautiful future or create a negative future, oh my goodness, it's made such a difference in my life that I asked my mentors if we could collaborate and create a class based on it. And that's what this class is. So you're also going to get that at no additional charge. Now here it is. I don't know if you're planning on being in person in Chicago. I am, for the record. All right. You want, you, if you are available, August, the first weekend of August, 2nd through the 5th, we have a very special paid in full bonus that just came in yesterday. As I mentioned earlier, I'm newly minted faculty for the Power Networking Conference this year, and I have been given as of yesterday five tickets to the conference. These are $14.99, so that's $1,500 tickets. I think the early bird is right now for $9.99, and I think that ends either at the end of this month or it might have already ended, but the regular price tickets are $14.99. And if you are paid in full for an in-person slot, you automatically, the next two people who pay in full will get a free ticket to Houston to the Power Networking Conference where Black millionaires and billionaires are waiting to pour into your business. I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> okay, well, let me just kind of, uh, somebody in a recent one of these is like, do you have a slide that shows how much all this is worth? Because you're giving us a lot, but I really can't wrap my mind around it. And me, I'm I'm a physicist by trade who is now a now a financial planner. So so I I I do make logical decisions but for the most part, when I see what I want, I go for it. Like, I know I want to be on the stage with Dr. Boyce Watkins. You know, I, I want to be on the stage. And I have paid, and I know many who have paid $20,000, $40,000, dollars to be on stage with a particular individual. So having the access to the headliners in person, I'm putting that as worth $20,000. Having that optional feature in Speaker Magazine, if you were to buy your own feature in Speaker Magazine and it wasn't connected with one of us, that's going to cost you a couple thousand dollars to have your own takeover issue, uh, your own takeover issue, okay? Uh, the media production kit, the work that Shea Brown's team does and that they will do to help uh, finalize your, your talk, 
worth $2,500, the media opportunities, having your products. Man, I've seen some. Now, look, I haven't done this because I'm too cheap. I have a limit. But I've seen some places where they're charging up to $5,000 for you to put your swag in that box. Look, I'm trying to get your swag in the box, not, <laughs> not trying to close you off from doing it, right? But I've seen people do that in these kinds of events, okay? Practice sessions with our team, being able to come on and, and just have the Zoom and be able to practice. The world-class photo package that I showed you. And then having me personally review your script if that's something that is interesting to you i think that's priceless because i'm amazing right <laughs> i'm not perfect not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but that's amazing so so all in all this is a twenty six hundred dollar uh twenty six thousand dollar value we're not even charging 20 for it we're not charging 15 we're not charging 10 because again our goal is to reach people right mm -hmm. we're not even charging five where our packages for virtual start at $397 and our packages for in-person start at $999, okay? So I'm going to encourage you to go out there to JuneteenthSpeaker.com or JuneteenthLegacyAttendInPerson.com. That's such a mouthful. That's why on the other slide I put just go to JuneteenthLegacy.com and click the Attend In Person and scroll down. Uh, go out there and get your package or send me that email if you know you're ready to move out today send me that email to queen of cash flow usa at gmail.com and we'll invoice you and we'll get you in the room for that in the power networking conference okay all right that is all i have for you today does anybody have any questions or want to do their two minute promo audition no questions. And for the official promo audition, I will send in the clip. But if you will, I'd like to share a two minute rough blurb of what that'll be about. Sure, sure. But you don't want me to use it to create promos. Correct. Okay. Okay, go for it. Okay. So um, you talk about the mindset. You know, we hear about wealth building and people say it starts with the mindset, your wealth mentality. But what I realize is that it stops there. We don't go deeper to describe exactly what this mindset consists of, how to build it, and how to establish it. And even more so when we talk about financial literacy and financial education, we may be providing the tools and the strategies, but without addressing the unique mindset that we all have that, per, that usually is the obstacle to applying the tools and strategies, that's where quantum wealth comes in. And that's what I'm here to talk about. And so we talk about the financial psychology, behavior patterns, the natural inclination of the brain to seek pleasure and avoid pain. We talk about the reasons why, even historical and uh, generational, why it's so hard for us sometimes to change our habits because of what we are raised to believe, how our brain was wired, and our current patterns that if we haven't take the time to look at them truthfully and address them, then they keep happening on autopilot that just prevent us from moving forward with our goals. And so I just wanted to share that because, you know, like you said, you're preaching to the choir and we're all here in this space, but I feel like what I am able to offer with the quantum wealth mentality is that deep dive into the behavior psychology, taking a true look at that mindset having a safe space and ha having the language around it so where it doesn't feel so uncomfortable to reflect in that way why we have, you know, and I'll speak from my experience on why I noticed some of my patterns didn't match up with the goals that I had. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having this stage because if you remember, we spoke last year, um, I was supposed to speak at the virtual event, but it didn't work out. And so I was just finishing up the book. And so since then, I've ran um, three workshop series to run this information through. And so I have a lot of, um, a lot to offer in this space. And I feel like it is the missing or the corner, the cornerstone, if you will, that'll really set us on that path to actually implementing these strategies. I love it. 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 And I, one of the things that I really like that you said, and I don't think you said it this clearly last year. One of the things I really think like that you said is about the patterns. Like, how do you even recognize that this is showing up in your life? And the, the other lady who was on, she talks about post-traumatic slave syndrome, and she talks about how do you recognize that this is showing up? And again, we're not talking about hypnosis or any of that kind of stuff, but like, okay, something's, there's a there there. There's something and, there that I'm missing. And just yeah. to give you one more, 
I have my bachelor's in accounting, my master's in finance, was a single individual um, with all the disposable income in the world. But for some reason, my consumer debt was stacking. I had my house and then it was Achilles injury that was $5,000 of surgery that had me reflect, okay, there's something I'm missing because I'm financially literate, but my, my behavior was not aligning with the goals that I had. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And I like that quantum wealth. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I love it. Okay. Well, do you have any questions? I, you got it published. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Now, let me ask you this. When I take this recording, because my intention for today was to take this particular recording and then extract it and send it out to all those who didn't show up or who might come afterward. Um, do you want me to cut your description out? Not at all. Okay. Feel free to share it. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, this is going to be so good. I'm telling you, this is going to be so good. We are going to have a good time in Chicago. You said no more questions? No more questions. I'll send you the email, Queen of Cashflow USA. USA. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye.